Hello Interwebs, welcome to Let's Fix Computers. I'm going to give you a quick talk today about fragmentation and defragmentation. Now, this is a, uh, a bit of an old thing that most people consider is obsolete these days, and it's something you did on old 90s computers and that kind of thing. But it's actually become more relevant than ever these days for a multitude of reasons that I'll go into in a minute. But uh, firstly, let's just quickly cover exactly what fragmentation is and why it slows down the computer. So, imagine your hard drive to be an enormous bookshelf filled with thousands of books. I mean, typical computer hard drives can have anything between 50,000 to 500,000 files on them, depending on how much is on the computer. So, that's a bookshelf with anything up to, say, 100,000 books on it at any given time. Now, when you take a book off the shelf, you know how the book sort of, you, you leave a gap there, but you've got to find that exact same gap to put the book back into when you're finished with it. Now, if someone else puts a book there in the meantime, suddenly the gap is gone, or if you add something to the book and it becomes a bit thicker, it may not fit in that same spot anymore. So, what will happen is one of two things. Either the book will just simply put, be put somewhere else where there is a gap, or if no gaps can be found, what often will happen on the computer is the book will be cut into separate smaller books and stored in multiple locations. So for a book, you could say it could be torn in half, but on a computer what's actually happening is it could be divided in sort of maybe anything between 20 and up to 50 chunks or fragments. Sometimes it can be more, it varies dramatically depending on the nature of the file. But either way, it gets divided up and scattered across the drive. Now, a mechanical hard drive typically has a seek time of, depending on how good it is, somewhere between 8 milliseconds and 12 milliseconds. Now, that might sound like a really short amount of time. However, it has, if your file has been divided into 50 fragments across the drive, the hard drive has to seek 50 times to assemble the entire file. Now, your seek time is 12 milliseconds, 10 fragments is 1.2 seconds, and then 50 fragments, that's going to be anything up to 6 or 7 seconds, depending on how far apart the fragments are. So suddenly, just a single file could take anything up to 10 seconds to find on the hard drive, instead of a fraction of a second. And if you're, say, loading up Windows, where hundreds of files get loaded up into RAM, you can see how this can quickly turn a, your startup time into minutes. And on older computers, as I often do servicing on, it's not uncommon for computers to take 5 or 10 minutes to fully complete their startup cycle. So, the solution to this is two things. Firstly, you need to reassemble all the files so none of them are split up into fragments on the hard drive. And the second thing is optimization, which is what this computer is currently doing, where you need to rearrange all the files into a logical order. Now, on a bookshelf, this is typically alphabetical by the author's surname. On a computer, there's a little bit more complex complexity to it, where files will be arranged by what directory they're in, or access time, or size, and so on, to, meet, to make sure that they can be found as quickly as possible. In a perfect world, you want a hard drive to be seeking um, sequentially across the drive. So, when it reads a file, Theoretically, the next file that's going to be read should be directly adjacent to the one that's previously read, thus reducing the amount of times the hard drive has to seek. Now, a typical mechanical hard drive might have a sequential read speed of, say, about 100 megabytes per second, but its random seeking read speed is more likely to be down at maybe 20 megabytes per second at best, and that's on a quick drive. So as you can see, you take a huge impact in performance if the drive has to seek to find the next bit of data. So the files will be rearranged into a super suitable order. If two files are in the same directory, the chances are they're going to be read at around the same time. So again, they're arranged next to each other on the hard drive. Uh, likewise, some, some more complex systems may put all of the Windows system files that are required for startup together. So when the computer is booting up, all the startup files are sequentially read, thus improving startup time. It varies depending on the setup and the defragger you're using and what kind of mode the defragger is in. But uh, a, ba a basic thing is just to put some kind of logical order on the files. So if you are going to run a mechanical drive, ideally you want to defragment it 
I do mine about once a month or so, or whenever I've made significant changes. So if I've installed or uninstalled a game, for example, that's probably a couple of gigs worth of data that has been moved. And thus I'll defrag the drive to arrange that nicely again. Likewise, every computer that I service, like the one you see in front of you, gets a defrag as well. As you can see on this one, for whatever reason, huge amounts of data are all halfway down the drive, which means this hard drive will commonly be having to seek back and forth from the first half to the second half. Even though there's no fragmented files here because they've already been defragged, this will still be taking a performance here because the read heads are having to jump back and forth across the drive. Whereas all the blue files you're seeing, those have all been optimized. Everything is being moved up to the top left to reduce the number of times the seek head has to travel across the disk and that makes everything wonderful. So that's it, that's defragging. The only other caveat is the, uh, the anomaly of the SSD, solid state drives. Now, um, you may have heard that you're not supposed to defrag these, and that's true for two reasons. The first reason is that SSDs have a seek time of virtually nil. A typical SSD seek time is probably about 0.01 of a, mil of a second. Um, and as such, because, this is because it's literally instantaneous, it's unaffected by fragmentation. It's a, I mean, an SSD's sequential read speed is commonly 400 or higher megabytes per second. And the interesting thing is its random read speed is also about 400 or higher megabytes per second. So it's entirely unaffected by these, this file fragmentation. So that's the first reason why you don't defrag them. The second reason is that because of the nature of, of non-volatile flash memory, the memory has a certain number of reads and writes that it can perform before it fails. And while on modern drives this is so high you probably won't reach it in the lifetime of the drive. We're talking it would take about, it would take about 10 years to actually deplete an SSD. And given the fact that most computers are obsolete within three or four years, that's, that's a, a quite a healthy lifespan. And that's usually just for one section as well. Um, these SSDs will typically automatically balance the data across the SSD to evenly wear it out. And that's the other reason why you don't defrag them. You let the, dry, you let the SSD manage its own fragmentation and it will automatically store the data where it thinks is best appropriate. So that's defragging and SSDs. So the last bit of information I'll give you now is just simply what programs I use. The program you see in front of you is Auslogix Defrag. This is my preferred weapon of choice. However, I use the portable version because the free downloadable version often comes with a lot of junk software. So you've got to watch out for that. If you go to their download page and scroll down about three quarters of a way, there's a download link in the right for a portable version that doesn't need to be installed and doesn't come with any junk software. And that's the one you see running in front of you. It's very fast and very efficient. Uh, other alternatives include Piriform Defragler, which is effective, but I find it to be very slow. I haven't used it for a while though, so don't quote me on that, but again, I find it was a bit slow for my taste. Uh, another another well-known defragger is O&O defrag. This is an enterprise defragger. It's extremely efficient. It's very fast. However, it only comes as a trial version, and I find it's fairly intrusive. It wants to run in the background and monitor the drive and things like that, and I don't like things that run in the background. So, very good piece of software. Not my not my personal preference. And then finally, you've got the Windows defragger, which quite frankly is useless, and I recommend against using it. Uh, it may be able to defrag the hard drive, but it's hopeless at optimization. So much so that the, the modern version of it, the Vista and 7 version, often does several passes on the drive. Now, quite frankly, if you can't do it in the first pass, it's obviously not a very good program. So I know, for, for, well, certainly Auslogix doesn't do multiple passes, it does it in one go. So. And as you can see, you get quite a nice verbose output. The final bit of advice I would give is before you defrag your hard drive, I recommend um, running disk cleanup to delete all temporary files and such like, so you're not having to defrag those. And I also suggest clearing your restore points, because restore points are immobile, they can't be moved. So they'll often leave large chunks of gray blocks on the drive that it can't defrag, and that generally reduces the effectiveness of it. So on this one, I've removed all restore points and temporary files first, so as you can see, there's no blocks of grey. The only block of grey on this one is this line along here, 
and that will be the page file. Now the page file, there's not much you can do about that. If you've got a real worst case scenario where the page file is scattered across the drive, then there is a very convoluted method of deleting the page file or reducing it down to a single megabyte temporarily, defragging, and then enlarging it again. Um, but uh, that's, that's, a, that's advice for another time. And one last thing before I go, because I nearly forgot to tell you about it. I mentioned earlier on the fact that defragging was considered a bit of an old style thing from the 90s. The reason was that um, uh, back in the old days, uh, hard drives were so slow that fragmentation was having an enormous effect on them. The seek times back then were probably like 20 milliseconds and up. And so obviously, even just five fragments was giving you a one second seek time. And, uh, you know, as I say, given, the sm given how low capacity the drives were and how much you had to cram your files onto them, the fragmentation would happen at a very fast rate because as a hard drive becomes full, fragmentation gets worse as there's less empty space to put the files into. On this computer, as you can see, there's big empty chunks, so it takes quite a long time for it to fragment. However, on an old computer or one with a very full hard drive, um, there is going to be very little empty space, so it's going to have to keep dividing those files up and find space to cram them in there. Then after a while, fragmentation kind of went out of fashion a bit because hard drives went up in capacity and also the seek times came down. But then these days, although the seek times have leveled out a little bit, the capacities have gone up dramatically. And because there is simply so much on these computers now, fragmentation has suddenly become relevant again because of the sheer volume of data we're storing on them. So yeah, that's about the history of it. So once again, defragging works, and I highly advise doing it on any computer with a mechanical drive. So thank you again, and I'll see you all soon. Goodbye.